Um, next, pro next item on the agenda is 6.7, page 123, key projects activity update. Shovel ready in vessel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mordena Koto. Uh, yeah, so we have a, our last shovel ready report um, for this committee um, as the program is, is winding up. Um, but yeah, as you say, we'll also provide some additional commentary around the vessel project. Um, as you can see, the, generally the program um, is and continues to perform well. Um, we do have some uh, projects that uh, still require completion, which we've transitioned out of the program and into business as usual. Um, part of that process has also been to wind up our funding agreements with, uh, with Kanoa. Um, and so these will become just simply part of our BAU program as opposed to requiring the program management um, that has previously been in place to provide the accountability reporting back to Kana. Um, and that was at their request to wind this up, um, particularly so that we can get on with tranche two of the um, funding that's come through. Um, so no other specific comments on that uh, other than so we've got the vessel and a couple of infrastructure projects which will continue um, into next year, um, all well and truly under control in that regard. Um, I'll just pause there. Mr Chairman, is there any questions on the general shovel ready program? Um, delighted to hear that the vessels be delivered almost on time. Have we got the <laughs> delivery organised or are yeah. we still waiting on the yeah. river to come up? Yep. To so, levels? <laughs> so the vessel itself, um, as has been signalled through, through, I think, this meeting and the key project reference group, um, we do have a, quite a significant time delay on the vessel. Um, and that's meaning that we are getting into the latter part of the season, which causes us challenges with regard to river levels and um, and delivering the vessel to the Merry Merry Mooring. Um, the last reported date that I have is at the moment we're looking at a 16th of December um, delivery date for the vessel, um, which is pushing into Christmas as well. Uh, we're continuing to consider the two different options for um, for dealing with this, in particular. Um, either the vessel remains up at Northland for a longer period of time or we look at an alternative mooring scenario in the Waikato River. Um, and actually, it's been a really good discussion with the team around what that alternative mooring scenario might look like um, and what the operational benefits um, could be for the delivery of the work program um, when the vessel is, is well and truly underway. Um, have been doing a lot of work with the uh, ship preparer um, to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to really challenge those dates. Um, at this stage, uh, there has been some additional resource um, brought to the project. The ship preparer has, uh, or sorry, the constructor has uh, confirmed that this is absolutely their, their top priority um, in terms of a shipyard project. Um, they've also brought in additional shelters so that additional work can be undertaken concurrently so we can keep things moving along. We also have our project manager who is on site regularly, almost daily, um, to make sure that not only are we doing everything that we need to do, um, but also that we're not skimping on quality. Um, only time is an issue. Um, as far as quality, scope and cost, um, there are no no concerns in that regard. Excellent. Thanks for that, Greg. Uh, Jennifer. Quick question on the Piaka River Corridor um, infill planting at the foreshore site. Uh, there won't be any further planting, uh, but maintenance will be undertaken. Will that Will not doing or completing that as scoped originally cause any further risk or cost in the long run? Because the bugbear of mine that if a project finishes, suddenly some BAU cost centre gets lumped with like fixing something later because if it didn't deliver. Mm -hmm. So, are there any risks in this space, or is it just that? Uh, not nothing that's yeah. been immediately raised. Um, it's yet yeah, you're right. It is a transition into, into a BAU program, and it's normal for us to keep an eye on these plantings and make sure that they're doing what we need to. We can always look at prioritising our BAU resource as well if there are any matters that arise with regard to maintenance. Yeah, it's bad luck with the. Yeah. Thank, thanks, um, Councillor Ma. Question. Yeah, th thank you, thank you, Chris. Hey, Greg, can you just confirm that the vessel project manager isn't being paid by WRC? Uh, so we have our own project manager in place to run the project, Pat Helis, um, and so he is part of the project and being paid by us. Um, the new project manager for Heron Ship Repair, which I assume is, is that who you're referring to, Councillor? Yes, yeah. Um, so that is um, a person who is employed by Heron Ship Repair. Um, it makes no difference to our contracted um, arrangement at the moment. 
Okay, and just a question around the um, obviously the delay and employment of a of a temporary or contracting of a temporary skipper. Um, how's that sitting? Because obviously Christmas time gets busy, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I haven't yeah, heard any much detail around that. Uh, and look, we, we do have um, a lot of work happening in the operational space as well um, in preparation for the vessel to be operational and to deliver the work program. Part of that is the skippering arrangement. We're in the final stages of confirming that, um, just around some details around insurances, et cetera. Um, but uh, no, no concerns to be reported at the moment. I think the main thing for me is to be ultimately making a call on what our preferred option is in terms of vessel delivery timeframe, um, and then we can work within the logistics of that. Yeah, th thanks, Greg. And I'd just like to reiterate again that um, I'd, I'd love to see some of our own internal staff um, along the skippering role be upskilled. I think it'd be great moving forward um, if we could bring some of the staff into that space so we end up having a skipper that can run that vessel ourselves uh, with some of the in-house staff that we have that are already doing marine work. But uh, that's something for the future anyway. Thanks. Thanks, Warren. All right, any other questions, Greg? If not, so thanks, Greg. And while I'm here, did you want me to cover off the sort of? Oh, yes. Might as well. I, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm jumping the order, um, but yep. well, in you your can. hands, yes, Mr. absolutely. Chair. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll just jump to. Sorry. Uh, yeah, page. Uh, page number one twenty-eight of your agenda. So yes, our sustainable infrastructure development framework. Um, this is the prop trial project for Motu Karaka um, and so a summary has been provided for you around where the project is currently at. Currently at Amber um, because we are certainly since our last conversation we have resolved resourcing issues and are well and truly moving ahead with the project. Um, still some work to do in terms of establishing the community advisory group which is a collective of landowners, iwi and DOC um, and so it will be a paper going to the Waikato Udaipatu JMA committee um, on the 1st of October to confirm um, that involvement. In the meantime, um, I'm very focused on making sure that project is moving forward. We're meeting with landowners this afternoon actually to have a talk about the pressure state analysis on that catchment um, and just to make sure that we are continuing to move forward um, in lieu of that more collective conversation happening. Um, but overall, um, the project is moving ahead well and some really interesting learnings are already coming out of it, which will help to inform um, sort of volume three or version three um, at the end of this particular trial. Thanks, Greg. Jennifer? So the report says there is a um, resourcing constraint, but you're telling us verbally there isn't one. So we're working within the resources that we have. Cool. Yep. So it's not an issue. So the last couple of months have been a real focus on understanding what we need and prioritising um, what we can. That's good. And then the thing about the JMA, it is unfortunate that it got moved from September to October our unavailability actually. But I would just challenge and want to understand, uh, feel free to challenge me back. I don't think we need to wait for the JMA to get that member appointed. I think that could be a retrospective FYI to the JMA because none of the other group members have a JMA with us and need any of that formality. So that's a what specific request from Waikato Tainui? Okay. Yeah. okay. Then that's fine. Yeah. Didn't know that part. Wasn't in there. Thank you. Um, Paul, did you are you help comfortable with the sort of you, maybe you should have a chat with Greg offline? Mm. Yeah. yeah, um we have a bit of information um on that project. We're also launching a website today um which gives some further details on the project and how it's rolling out. Um there is also a a, a bit more of a um detailed insight for Tomorrow's Integrated Catchment Management Committee. Greg, maybe the um, presentation you did to the Motor Karaka people, that original presentation, send that to Paul? Yeah, I can do that, yeah. In fact, I'll, if it helps, I think it's, I'll, I'll arrange a sit down time with you, Paul. So through the chair, I think, um, so there's the project, but I think there's the intent of the overall sort of that would be good for to understand as well. That was the presentation, that, the original presentation, explaining it to the members. Okay, Greg. Yep, I'll take that, that action. Useful. Thank you. Okay, thank you for yep. that. Thanks, Greg. Let's the chair now. Thank, thank you. you.
Morning, Tracy. Policy program. Oh, yes, here, yeah, two hours. Absolutely. Ah, my name is Koto. Um, so I guess the committee will have received the report. Um, yep. Just want to acknowledge a few people in the room or online who are involved in this. So Brent Sinclair is our project sponsor at WRC and also he's on the program steering group. Uh, John Crane has also been deeply involved in this work. Um, and I'm the product owner at WRC and on the advisory group for the program. So um, do you just want me to highlight a couple of things in the report? Yep. Thank you. Yes, please. Yep. Um, so I guess just to emphasize that, you know, we are working with 10 councils. Um, West Coast have, have now officially signed up. So there's a slight adjustment down to uh, WRC's share of the program to 17.2%. Um, so obviously the cost sharing is, is helpful there. We're still implementing in tandem with Bay of Plenty. You will have seen from the, the report though that there has been a schedule change. So a delay in the build of about six months has had flow and effects to a delay in product acceptance testing and then deployment. Also, I guess noted in the report, the initial schedule was quite aggressive because councils wanted the product as soon as possible. But we found that um, a more realistic approach means that we have some contingency and uh, I guess that's the impact there. Um, there will be an impact on costs. So, um, and when I say that, our costs that we will spend this year that were budgeted, we are unlikely to spend them all because of some of the work that's now required to happen a bit later on. Um, and something else that I guess isn't in the report, which has come to light more recently, is there is an engagement work stream that will provide an opportunity for our staff and councils to see the product, to experience road shows, to provide feedback. So those things are all happening in the last quarter of 2024. Um, that's all I'll probably highlight and uh, questions or thoughts. Thanks very much, Dean. You mentioned um, changes in cost. Does that mean increases or... I know there's timing differences, but just in the total cost. Yeah, I think it's a um, fixed price um, product with Datacom. So um, at this point, we're not, uh, yes, we're not aware in detail of any additional costs. It's more about costs that we would have spent on staff release for PAT product acceptance testing has been delayed. So, um, and I guess costs associated with the implementation of needing a change manager full time or needing business analysts have all been moved along. So, um, yeah, I guess the answer to your question is those aren't escalations, those are just change in timing. So through the chair, something that I did mention to Brent uh, last week was at the moment we're reporting sort of the RSHL program status, but I think we need to be uh, providing visibility to this committee around our own implementation approach. Um, to pick up exactly those points, I mean, I guess in terms of we do have resources on board now and the impact of yes. um, the delays from a program perspective. So, um, yeah, I think if we can take that into some insights for the committee, great. Thank can, you. Can I, can I just con confirm that the resources that we've internally employed are included in that total budget? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, yes, thank you. We do have a project status report and we've just changed the format um, so we can include that as we go along. Thank you. Do you have any other further questions for Dean? Yeah, just um, by way of sort of background understanding, um, so are we all going to have the same product apart from APIs will be identical and we'll just all adopt our process so we're all the same? That's a good point. And one of the key aspects of this program is around consistent um, good practice. So that is those 10 councils using the software consistently. Um, and so the short answer to your question is we're looking at all the councils using it consistently. Yeah. It is a big change and there's um, quite a lot of work in helping people come along that journey. Um, and so that's why I guess one of the key aspects of this program is around change management. For many of our staff, they're using Iris already. Um, and it's an adjustment for other staff in our organisation who don't currently use IRIS. Um, it's a bit of a bigger change. So I support um, 
you that we start at some point to, to think about the internal projects. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it's a transformational program. I think we can get every, you know, 17 councils around New Zealand on the same, 17? Uh, 10, yes. 10, sorry, on, on the same project, on the same pro, um, software. Is a major change. But, oh, team to be team to be um, thanked for the initiative. Oh, great idea. So, thanks, Dean. All right, we have a resolution. If there's no more questions for Dean. Oh, sorry, Tracy. Let me put God. Tracy. Morning, councillors. Morning, Mr. Chair. We're on page 133. Just get me so. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to change. So, this is at the bottom of the, the page here, just identifying that. The project has moved to amber from being red. Um, we know there is a lot of change afoot um, in central government, and this project is impacted by some of that. We also know that central government has uh, two more packages before the end of the year in terms of reform, some that may and some that may not impact with um, next year likely to be a bit of a wholesale review of the MPS freshwater management. Now, in saying that, we did take the report to Council in June, noting that we still have statutory responsibilities, which had the legal advice appended. I note that legal advice didn't make it into this agenda. Um, we can circulate that. All councillors have had it, but happy to circulate it to our independent members, um, acknowledging that we are in stuck in between a bit of a uh, rock and a hard place and that we do have statutory requirements, but we also need to be prudent stewards of our ratepayer investment. Um, the key issues associated still remaining with the project are identified there in paragraph nine, being the changing national direction, our ongoing conversations uh, with River Settlement, iwi, and framing up our co-governance responsibilities. Um, ongoing engagement and our freshwater committee. What I did just want to take you through was some budgeting. Now, um, I know this committee's had a lot of exposure to the M4 process. Um, the fact that we have our financials loaded in for this current year and that we're able to access those meant, um, you know, I've created a couple of graphs yesterday that um, previously I would have had to go to a management account and ask them for the information and create those graphs for me. So I just wanted to kind of reiterate that self-help that was um, a dream. We're getting there. Um, the first graph that I wanted to show is not coming up. That's not in Excellent. <laughs> it's not in Vore's fault. No, it's not. Let me just try again. Sorry, I'm trying to um, be a bit wazier than I am. Here we go. Um, so this is an indication that in January when we were going through the LTP process, we for, foresaw um, the changes that were coming. So we did make the amendments to the uh, LTP budgets. The, the green line is the budget that was reflected in the LTP for the project. What I've included there, and it was a request of um, Independent Chair Graham last time to have total costs of the project. Um, this is direct costs. So there are actuals there from 21, 22, 22, 23, um, and 23, 24. Um, now that we're in the 24-25 year, um, what I'm uh, looking to present to the committee is our month actual. So what we've got here is contracted services, legal fees, and accommodation uh, meals and meeting fees. So these will be highlighted to you at each meeting. 
what that those costs are. And lastly, what we also have is a monthly projection that we will check in on each month against actuals. Now, the, the figures there for September are for yesterday. Um, obviously, it's 20th of the month, the end of the week, so they will look different uh, next week and probably the there will be closer alignment between the, the green line and the actual projection for the month. Um, if members are wanting to know detail in terms of what we have spent the actuals on, um, I can give that overview. I do know that from our Finance and Services Committee, there is a, an increase of interest in the um, direct costs associated with this project. So those are the, the two graphs, essentially, that I would like to present to the committee, but also would take guidance from the committee if there are other graphs, other information from a financial perspective that you would like. Tracy, thanks very much for that. And I think that's that's really useful to have that information presented to the committee. Thanks. Um, and yeah, first time I've seen some really good stuff coming out of Info. So yeah, well done. Um, does anybody have any questions for, for Tracy? Just a quick one, and that was um, the co-governance freshwater committee established date is end of October. I know we've got a bunch of JMAs coming up in the next month. Are you thinking that we'll have to move or that will get hit? Yeah, um, through you, Mr Chair, that date will likely move uh, by about a month okay. uh, with um, the passing of uh, mm. the King. Unfortunately, um, we did defer as a matter of respect a couple of meetings that we had with the staff working group. Totally appreciate the staff Absolutely. who are still giving a lot to um, the Kingitanga infrastructure we have a meeting scheduled for next week um, to put some of those things in place. I have scheduled uh, two workshops with councillors, one in mid-October and late October, because I believe we will need to workshop a number of matters before we take it through the process um, and also assist council to understand the processes that we must follow and that River Settlement A we must follow as well. So I'm thinking November, December, at best, but it may be an early New Year conversation. Yep. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. If there's no further questions of Tracy, that takes us to the end of our key projects activity update. So I have um everybody to move the resolution. Yes. Thank you, Paul. And seconder. Yeah. And thank you. <laughs> All in favour? Aye. Against carried. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks for your team to help. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. What's being used? Uh, Stu, welcome. Good morning. Right, we'll let you present your paper, thanks. Or take it sure. Yep. Yeah. So no, I'll, we'll have some questions. That's great. I'll point you to a couple of areas of interest through there. You'll see in the uh, annual leave management um, that we're continuing to, to monitor that as we go. There was a request, I think the last time that it was here, that we didn't see any come back more than 300 hours. And I just wanted to give you an assurance that the one that we have that is over 300 is being actively managed currently. And it's a, a key a key person that we've got there. So. Um, we, we have heard you and we're managing that as best we can. <laughs> um, you'll move through into the, the sick leave figures uh, and you'll see that the um, average time there was 6.4. Uh, looking forward, at the time of writing this, um, we obviously didn't have the, the current data, so there has been a bit of a lift that you'll see in the next um, period, but that's coming back again, which is great. EAP, um, you'll have seen at the end that um, we have uh, instigated a new service there, Rongoa Māori, um, which you can read about. And we have had that up and running now for a period of weeks. And it's to give you um, a bit of a heads up, basically, that I think you're going to see an increase in our utilisation because uh, a lot of people across the organisation have obviously been notified this. It's open to everyone. And we've got a number of people that are trialling it. 
Um, so when you see that um, percentage increase for usage, don't panic too much. Um, it'll really be in the next sort of few months as people have um, accessed that to, to, to see how it goes and what their views are, we should see that normalising again. But that's a, a great new service and that um, runs alongside a number of other things that we're doing across the organisation for wellbeing, whether that's my everyday wellbeing, the good yarns um, and you know the EAP services that we've got. So we continue to, to focus in that area and to do the best we can by people. That was the highlights for the report. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Stu, for that. If I may, <laughs> the, uh, the EPA update, I suppose I'm always thinking, looking at those donut graphs, and I look at the biggest segments of, say, on the work issues around career, relationship with manager, and I guess one I'm really interested in as well is workload. Is there work coming up from work that you're leading with ELT that will perhaps address that over that might be there or might I realize it's a lot on perception as well but are you comfortable that there's work happening to move that donut around over time yeah 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 I am and I mean there's a few factors that drive that um the relationship with manager we've obviously um in recent times or over the last sort of 12 to 18 months picked up some more performance type work where we are helping people with their performance to lift their game and that obviously causes a bit of discomfort yeah. and some challenges in that space so that will um a portion of part of that um i guess uh, the n4 project you know that's we're currently continuing yes. to work and support the organization on that they've told us that they'd like us to support them further and that's um an area that we continue to have a, a good focus on and um, so they're kind of the, the key areas i think okay. we'll get right into that. Mm. and then it's just on the annual leave um piece i recall mm. last time i mentioned about having I don't know exactly what I said, but it was like anyone over 300 hours be good to see uh, something booked, and it's great to see that's the case. Although, what's that red line at the top of the table on page 145? Is that like a one staff member? But I just wondered why it's red, just to highlight that it's yeah. over 400. So yeah. it's a 320, yeah. I obviously need to get something booked there, but um, over time, just having that sinking lid because people will go in the over 300 very easily from the 280. So That's right. If leave can be booked from say 280 at some point. That's right. Keep That's moving right. that down. I'm just looking yeah. at the line. It's pretty flat for a while now. I feel like somebody has to say keep on that. Keep the pressure on. To yeah. be a lot lower. Yeah, no, we, we understand and it is an ongoing discussion at ELT. Um, uh -huh. And I guess we're we're conscious of that, and obviously Christmas is coming, so it's a great opportunity for people to to book in a bit of extended leave. Great, mm. Christmas time does usually what to sing. Thanks, Jim. Do there other questions? Move for the resolution. They're all hiding. Thank you, yeah. Jim. Pamela. <laughs> all in favour? I. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You're the one that's all over it. You've obviously done your homework, so. Yeah. If you um, if you're worried about the leave, some people put a graph in to show the um, and they use you have a stacked graph over time, and you can see the pattern through the year potentially. Yeah, got one. Have I missed it? Oh, I see. Yeah. It probably needs to go over a three-year period so you can see the peaks and troughs because it does flatten. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's, it takes that seasonality out of it. All right, so we've had a move and a seconder. Favourite? All right, against carried. Thank you. Thank That's you. Carried. Thanks, David. All right, policy review schedule update. Yeah, I know. Didn't get much of a break. I'm sorry, Fiona. Hi again. So this uh, policy review schedule is presenting um, an update on the council policy reviews. There was one um, policy reviewed um, this quarter, which was the Ford policy, which requires approval from this committee. Um, just the key pieces, the policy is included, the key pieces to 
note there were some uh, minor amendments which have been included um, in the report, um, but the review did consider advice from the Serious Fraud Office and Counter Fraud Centre, and as a result, there was um, uh, some recommendations around advice um, on the addition of principles, which have been included in the policy, um, and these uh, provide a clear foundation uh, from which Council can develop a consistent approach to fraud prevention. Um, there was another minor update to reflect the changes made to the protected disclosure whistleblower policy from the exercise that was completed recently in stating the clear responsibility of ELT. So those were um, the amendments and ELT endorsed those amendments and are open to any questions, comments. Yes, in, in summary, the, the, the minor tweaks, just to clarify points that have had some grey areas around them. So that's the way I'd read the recommendation. So, yeah, so thanks for that. Thanks, Raj. Have you got any comments on it? Hi. Hey, Chris. Lauren, sorry. No, that's all good. I know I know it's hard to look up at a TV screen. Hey, just really quickly in that um, fraud policy, and I'm not sure I may well have missed it, but um, just around um, natural justice and people's right to a, to a um, appeal, any decisions made, is there a piece in that policy around that? No, I was just sorry. I was just looking at Connie who prepared the policy, but no, that's not included in this uh, policy specifically. We can, yeah, we can have a look and see where that fits. Yeah, just so I've been doing a lot of work on constitutions and stuff like that, and and um, you know, expelling members and stuff. But I just wondered if that natural justice and appealing, and sorry, an appeal um, process should should be within a policy um, like that. That was also yeah. If if you want to follow that up, that'd be great. Thanks. Thank good, you. Good point. Thanks, Warren. That's good. Any other questions? If not, the, um, the resolution, policy review, schedule update, fix. Happy to move. Thanks, Warren. Seconder. Jennifer, thank you. All in favour? Aye. Against? It's carried. Thanks. Thanks very much, Fiona. Right. Elected members' interest. Dave, <clears throat> democracy advisor. Okay. Morning, everyone. Um, this is a new item on the agenda as such. We have taken the gifts register report that this committee receives regularly, and we have split the elect members' interests and gifts off from that. And it's partly in response to the external auditors report that was tabled earlier in the meeting. A recommendation was made. So this report, I will largely request that it be taken as read. Um, noting that on page 162, there's a minor error. Councillor Noel Smith's gift, last gifts declaration was the 3rd of December 2023, obviously not the 3rd of December 2024. And if anyone has any questions, happy to cover those. I'm happy to move. But Accepted. Second on that. Thank you. Still, you're happy to second. Thanks, Angel. All in favour? Just carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. And the next one is conflicts of interest. We've got Connie in the room, have we? Connie. Um, I'll I'll take it mostly as read. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. The the staff conflict of interest we um, request this annually. So this is an annual report of it, and then the gifts the staff gifts received or declined over hundred dollars is every six months. Um, as you'll note, some have chosen to register gifts that are of a lower value, and that's that's fine and encouraged if they wish to, if they feel like they should um, declare it. Uh, yeah, so 
yeah, I'll probably just take any questions actually. The, the comments are in the, in the appendix. Jennifer? It was just in the table, attachment one, um, reading through it, I guess if we had some context of what the undertaking was that led to the entering of that, the table would make sense for me to read. Yeah, just if we want it to of be. Of why they entered it? Yeah. 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 Because, yeah. say, for example, Chris McClay, thinking about collab, mm. what prompted him to. I know. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. saying so, that again, but I'm. Yeah, so um, through the chair, the, effectively the conflict of interest process looks for any vendor that we have set up in the system that somebody has been involved with a transaction with. And so that prompts the purchase you, order stuff, you get prompted. Yeah, so at the end, if, um, through this process, you get a list of people that you've interacted with from a right. vendor perspective, and you have to confirm have a conflict. Think that you have a potential conflict of interest with them or that you have no conflict with them. So it's against that um, process that this should be extracted. Well, yep. That makes sense as context for how you get the comments. It's just yeah. say our CEO had mentioned a couple of times like a group. Hence mm. making the table really useful. Um, it was only really those ones mm. that prompted me to think what am I missing here? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jean. Really quickly. Um, yeah, just attachment two. Um, just a, a few of the gifts that were accepted. Um, had a couple of staff members attend. So is a one declaration with another staff member mentioned? that cover both staff members mm -hmm. then orders um just um just wondering about yeah did that tick the boxes you are you referring to the <clears throat> the attending the event like the yeah. last two yeah yeah there's um that we did have a discussion about that and there's probably some education around um um uh, and reminders about registering it and we do obviously rely on staff registering yeah, um, gifts received or, or declined. And there could be some question of what they think the value might be as to whether they've put it in or not. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just wondering if they were covered by default or what it is mentioned. Oh, um, through the chair, I would expect an individual responsibility to declare yeah. um, because that shows that people are aware of the requirement to okay. disclose um, and that the policy is actually working. So I can't assume that somebody else is going to disclose for me and it's not their yeah. job to do that. Yeah. So I need to take that into the chair. Yeah. yeah, so probably maybe just some more education around. Um, that would be fantastic, thanks. And it, it, it also, um, people's perceived values, <laughs> because the chief executive um, declared a, a gift that I didn't declare and I was at the same venue at the same time, uh, took in the same food and alcohol, maybe drank more than I did that night, but that's a, that's a, I'm being facetious. So I, I didn't value it as highly as he did, so it really is you know, no value put on these things, you have to have this. We, um, do we have a process to track potential conflicts over regulatory activities by the council. So if someone may be um, this, some entity or person or whatever may be the subject of compliance or enforcement activity, do we identify whether there's someone on, on council that has a relationship with them which would play a conflict? Yeah, council, yeah, I guess. Um, oh, through the chair, so um, Brent Sinclair's there, who's probably best place to answer. The short answer will be yes. Got some red. Uh, <laughs> yes, we have a conflicts of interest policy um, around our regulatory um, activity. Um, so, short answer to your question is yes. Uh, and in addition to that, um, you have other safeguards, uh, such as yeah, uh, recommenders and decision makers being different. 
um, so that you can um, pick up that conflict of interest and recommenders and decision makers around enforcement action. So you can pick up any conflict. Every time you sit and make a, a significant decision around um, um, a compliance enforcement action, um, uh, as you have in these meetings, we have a declaration of any conflict of interest or, of, of involved with the party. So um, we have policies around all of those um, those those elements, which if the committee is interested in seeing those, we can absolutely provide those. So, um, so thank you for the answer, excellent answer. Be appropriate to identify if you was identify at one of the process meetings. But stick it on a schedule somewhere. Governance transparency. Um, 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 if the, we, we can do that, if that would, if the committee would like that, um, there, because um, we would we keep a record if there are any conflicts. Um, it wouldn't actually right now be anything to report to you, but um, we can absolutely do that if it's something that the committee would like to see the process working in action. It's a thing that people kind of forget about sometimes. But we are also a regulator, <laughs> and, and these uh, can get sharp edged. So through the chair, perhaps as part of this reporting, that we do just expand it to cover off the process that is used in the regulatory space. I know the first time that we had the internal audit review around our fraud risk mechanisms, it was that regulatory space that was probably the um, key area of activity that we focused on, hence why we do have really good processes in there, but I, I think visibility for this committee that we do beyond, um, you know, the conflict of interest from a fiduciary perspective, but from a regulatory, be helpful. Just as uh, yeah, a yeah, of course, what, one of the one of the most significant examples, of course, is that this council. Um, is the largest consent holder in the region. <laughs> and so we both process a lot of resource consents for this council, so we have to make sure that there's no conflicts internally. Uh, and of course, then we do compliance. Um, if you're the largest consent holder, then you're going to have quite significant compliance activity. So we're very conscious that that requires um, a, a clear conflict process. So our external customers are clear that we are treating um, all parties equally. You don't get special treatment just because you happen to be one of our colleagues that lives down the corridor. <laughs> okay, so no other questions? Okay, move for the resolution. Uh, oh, that's right. Move for the resolution. I move. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Pamela, thank you, Pam. All in favour? Aye. Carried. Okay, so now I have to pause the meeting. Well, resolution to close the, exclude the public. Moved. Seconded. Second. All in favour? Eight against. Carried. Democracy, Dave, to sort out the.